Grand Groove TV. That's what I'm doing. Your man, Big Jax. Yeah, what up? I think I, I think I got somebody. My man Bozak. Think, oh, that, oh, that's Kodak joint? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, Woo. are you trying to one-up me? <laughs> <laughs> that's how we starting this shit off already? <laughs> <laughs> My man Peter Rosenberg back in motherfucking Canada. I'm going to show you how I do it when I'm in Canada early. No doubt. Yeah. Welcome back. Your dreams were your ticket out. Welcome back to that same old place that you laughed about. Well, the names have all changed since you hung around. You know, we're chilling right now, just talking about Hot 97. Of course, you know, your man Peter got uh, Sight from Rosenberg in the mornings, <laughs> real late on Sunday nights. Doing it, doing it pretty big, yo. Huge. Uh, when I say huge, I'm talking about my penis size. Pause. Oh. Pause. <laughs> yeah, it's going well though, man. So, when uh, will we go to New York City and see your face on a billboard? From your mouth to God's ear. Hopefully, hopefully that's actually happening. Like, uh, no, yeah, that's real talk. I'm, I'm hopefully, that, real. hopefully that's actually happening. I'm sorry, I got caught up because someone got Dairy Queen up in here. I, I was thinking the same thing. I'm gonna. That gonna was my only here. thing, man. Maybe I should have finished it sometime soon. No doubt, no doubt. And I mean, we we're talking before, and I always, I always thought that like after seeing the videos, like seeing uh, throw some cheese on it, bowling, and all that, and even like the summer jam, all the the flip camp stuff that you do, that you could have a future in television. So, you know, what are you looking for towards you know getting onto TV, get, getting your radio face onto television? My dream in life was always to do more than Hot 97, but now we just we're just really getting started after a year. We're really just getting started. So I really want to kick ass and, you know, get crazy numbers and do Hot 97 well. But definitely, I mean, the interesting thing is when you start achieving your dreams, you have new dreams because I've now been working at radio for 12 years. So, you know, you start to aspire to other stuff. Like, now television, you know, becomes something that you really want. I just want to be able to reach the most people, you know, and have the most freedom to do cool stuff. And I love radio. I mean, I'm a, I'm a radio nerd. That's how I, that's how I started doing it. Listen, I know, I'm, I know I'm a very, I have a lot of ideas for hosting a television show that'll be entertaining. I mean, frankly, if people see my videos on YouTube, you can see the making of what it would be. But then I have some specific stuff I'm working on that's a little more specific than that. Um, like my noisemakers thing that I do where I interview artists. You can see that on TV, uh, potentially. That's something that I'm working on with a very cool business partner to potentially get that on television. And we're meeting with people about that, and there's been interest. Would you consider yourself a YouTube sensation, somewhat? Because I mean, like, YouTube kind of helped you I get... I have enough views to be a sensation. I mean, my videos have... You know, my, I, I still throw up bricks that only get a few thousand views, you know, like... But, but essentially, YouTube is what got you onto hot, right? Doing those videos. No, I think by the definition of it, yes. I think I am, like, one of the early people who gained success from YouTube, you know, like, because I definitely, I, I, I don't care, like, I, I know, I feel comfortable saying that in, in the underground hip-hop world, I've become a respectable character, I think probably fairly internationally in terms of the underground hip-hop shit, so, and I, that comes from YouTube mostly, no one knows, like, all my low-budget college radio credentials, they mostly know me from YouTube. And it's kind of crazy, because I mean, like, in the root of it all, I mean, you're, you're, you're a hip hop nerd, you're a hip hop fan, and that, that, that's what's crazy listening to Wine Up. Listen to you know anything that you do, you can tell that you're a hip hop nerd, a hip hop fan. And now you're rubbing elbows with all these dudes, you know, like. Oh, man. <laughs> Why do I be rubbing elbows with dudes? <laughs> okay, with, with the hip hop elite, male and female. There you go, there you go. So, how crazy has it been for you in these last few years, just, you know, going from. Loving uh, Primo's records to having his number in your phone, which I assume you do, right? Actually, I have a new phone. I don't think it's in my phone. <laughs> <laughs> so, next question. Um, <laughs> that's been sweet, man. You know, I was up here with you guys a few years ago when I was with Kev Brown. And we were hustling, going to shows, and no one knew who we were. We would do, like, show after show. Every once in a while, we'd have a successful show where there'd be a couple hundred people, but more often than not, there would just be 
you know, a handful of people there. And so now to be doing stuff on my own and I'll go out of state, people will actually come out and see me. And that's, it's awesome. And, and, and you, you want to hear, I always believed that I was good at like hip hop, commentary, entertainment. Like I always felt that if people were really into hip hop, they could find me an enjoyable personality. So I'm excited that that seems to be true. I mean, I'm not new to this. I'm true to this. You know <laughs> so who's the biggest Peter Rosenberg fan in hip hop right now? Like, like who are some of like the top dudes who are like, yo, I love what you guys do? Well, for me personally, the, the biggest fan I've ever met who is like, it's a hilarious story actually. I'll tell you the story. Why not? So I was at um, Glow in the Dark, where I DJed for Consequence. Shout out to Consequence, because DJ Mask for a garden was crazy. And we went out after we after I played, I went out in the crowd and I was just hanging out. Some dude comes up, introduced himself to me. Big fans want to say what's up, man. I listen to you every day. Oh, blah, blah. I was like, oh word, thank you. Said his name, I couldn't really hear him. I was like, much appreciated, man. Thank you. Kept it moving. <laughs> Bless you. He, my friend who I'm with is like, you know that was Maxwell, right? And I was like, what, who? She's like, Maxwell. I was like, Maxwell, Maxwell? She was like, Maxwell, Maxwell. I was like, he cut his hair? <laughs> she was like, yeah, that was definitely Maxwell. So I looked back over, and Maxwell, get, Maxwell goes like this. <laughs> because like I didn't sun him, I was very polite, but I just didn't want to extend the conversation. I was like, "Thank you so much, man. Really appreciate it. See you later." And he was kind of like, and I was like, "Yo, come here." So I was like, "It was Maxwell." So we've been real cool ever since then. Yeah, um, you know, Jim Jones has always been a fan of the Insight Show. He's, he's always been down. It's and funny because like Epstein. when you first got there, though, like didn't Jimmy had to kind of like let you know what was good, right? When you first got to New well, York, well, that was good. <laughs> What was bad? <laughs> yeah, he wanted to slap me in the face a little bit, but it's gonna happen again. Like, it's a gamble, you know? Like, a lot of these big ass, big ass, I'll say it, bloggers, they sit at home and they blog about people and they're never gonna meet anyone or see anyone because they're fucking fat losers <laughs> who live behind their keyboard and live in shanty towns. <laughs> However, I'm on the radio in fucking New York City. So if you say something, they hear you. Everyone hears you. Like, I forget that they hear me, but they all hear you. And if they don't, their man hears you. You know, you'd be surprised how many people in hip hop have a good sense of humor. And I think how many people in hip hop are at least excited that Syph and I are on and we have a good sense of humor. So it's like, what kind of dicks would they be to be like, oh, well, finally there's a show that's pretty funny and then get sensitive when we make a joke. You know, I mean, I, I definitely, there are people I give a hard time to pause every time I talk about it, you know, and it can be awkward. Now I gotta just let you know that uh, my man Royale, right here, is probably the biggest Juan Epstein fan I personally know. Yeah. He, you might be sitting beside like, the biggest Juan I, Epstein fan. Yo, let me tell you how, like, for the last two months, riding around in this dude's car, we listened to your voice. And that's it. That's crazy. That's so gay. It's very gay. <laughs> but, I, but honestly, it makes my day because I, when I do that shit, you don't think about people listening really. I mean, you do, but I don't know. It's the internet. You don't really believe. I don't believe anything. Like, I know people really like it, but I don't really know why. And sometimes I hear episodes where I know why. The post South by Southwest episode, legendary. I, I'll even say. That was a ridiculous episode. Well, What's your favorite lyrics? one Epstein? Oh, one Epstein. <laughs> How the fat Joe one? <laughs> well, you're lucky I didn't wear I think I, if I don't have that exact shirt, I have one very similar. I'm glad we didn't wear it. That would have been extra <laughs> No doubt. Yo, we're heading back to Toronto. My man Peter's here. Yo, Roy's why do you show everyone your passport? <laughs> we ain't doing that shit. <laughs> Bozak's right here. <laughs> Yeah, it's right here, it's right here. Okay, well, it's, it's the, no, the battle. Honestly, just you two. You no, no, y'all two, y'all two. Okay, okay. It's, the it's the battle of passports right now. Listen, mine, 
I just woke up, my hair is pushed back, whatever. All right, all the information there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then, now let me, now let me hold on. Let me show you the truth right here. <laughs> I didn't know there was a shade of black this dark. They had to invent it. Like, are you serious? <laughs> what person is letting that person? It, look at that hair. You look like Sonic the Hedgehog, but mean and evil. I was, <laughs> my lord, Big Jacks. Well, you keep this at home.